All right, let's talk a little real politics now. Primary day, even though most of us said, huh? But that's right, primary day, including if you're a New Yorker or you live in a lot of states in the Northeast, uh, you should have voted today, but I bet you most of you didn't. Well, we're also going to talk about questions of the youth vote, but let's first stay on the issue of student loans. We talked about this last segment in student debt, Andrew, and it really folds into really why the president was in North Carolina today. Yeah, Rich, in our last segment, you played uh, President Obama's pitch to keep student loan rates down. Mitt Romney scoring points in places today after going on the record agreeing with the president. I fully support the effort to extend the low interest rate on student loans. Sounds good, but compare that to what Mitt said just last month when the primaries were still going on when he was directly asked what he would do to lower rates and other college costs. College is expensive. You don't want to have huge debts. And, and I'm not, I, I know that it would be popular for me to stand up and say I'm going to give you government money to, to make sure to pay for your college, but I'm not going to promise that. What I'm, going to, what I'm going to tell you is shop around, get a good price. Don't just go to the one that has the highest price. Go, go to one that has a little lower price where you can get a good education, and hopefully you'll find that. And uh, don't take on too much debt. And don't expect the government to forgive the debt that you take on. Sounds a little different there. Go All right, the right, right. I'll beat any price for college, guaranteed. All right, no flip-flopping, but a little bit of movement in our nightly America Vote snapshot. With just 196 days until the election, Obama is up by just under four points in today's poll averages. Picked up more than a half point overnight. As Rich mentioned, today is primary day in five states. In New York, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, the only mystery today, how big will Romney's wins be? Expect a Romney win in Pennsylvania, though the numbers will be interesting, given that it's Rick Santorum's home state. And there's, believe it or not, an outside chance Newt Gingrich could win today's Delaware primary. With word leaking from the Gingrich camp, he may rethink his continued candidacy should he underperform there. With the student loan debt driving the political agenda today, both campuses are focusing on the youth vote. Romney saying voters are beginning to question the president, claiming he promised to unite the country and promote future jobs and has failed on both fronts. The president, as you heard earlier, was at the University of North Carolina, also courting the youth vote. Students there began to line up to see the president last night, something you might expect for a UNC basketball game, but it's a little more rare for a political speech. Then again, we saw a lot of this, particularly among young voters four years ago. In fact, Obama won two-thirds of the vote among voters under 30 last go-round. This year, looking at voters under 35, he's not doing quite as well. NBC News Wall Street Journal poll puts Obama at 60% among those under 35. No real jeopardy, though, of losing the youth vote. But young people voted in numbers never seen before in 2008. And this year, that enthusiasm is slipping. In 08, 63% of young voters said they had a big interest in the election. Right now, that number is down to just 45%. Increasing that number could win the president another term, but if that number slips, Rich, it could be President Romney come January. You know, you've covered elections uh, as a vi Dominic, and Gene, you saw this firsthand on the college campus. It was the cool thing to do uh, four years ago to volunteer, to knock on doors, to do cold calling in big numbers for the president, let alone to make a modest donation. This year, I'm assuming you're not seeing remotely the level of interest here. Uh, it's not as uh, cool a thing to do maybe on the campus for a lot of kids as it was four years ago. Yeah, no, clearly there is not nearly as much enthusiasm on our campus well, or on other campuses. Four years and ago? you know, I don't, you know, there may yes. have been a little bit of that, but I also think that youth are deeply committed to various issues and they feel like they have, to a certain extent, been let down by a president. If you look across the board at issues they care about, environmentalism as an example, they feel that they have a president there who has not done what he said he would do on the issue of the environment. You look at the cost of colleges we've just talked about. Sure, he come out in today about this issue but this is something that's affected them These since he got into the 14 15 16 uh, when the president and got I'm elected not saying in the first they don't place. like him but what I'm saying is they are not enthusiastic about what he's done so it's harder to get them out and they are you know you don't see many huge fans at the college level of Mitt Romney for instance but you're just not going to get that at level of, well there are some but, Andrew there no, are you, some you people joke around <laughs> and be like who cares what a college I with different states that we cover this, measure. it was amazing how many of these kids, instead of getting banged up on a Friday night, were knocking on doors, working the <laughs> phones here, um, filling up the wherever he'd go. Um, and I remember back in the day when there was a presidential election, it was surprising if the kids would get up to vote. In this case, I mean, they were really Let, let, let me just give engaged. you one last personal example. I remember, a con and this is the first time I've ever admitted this, I'm a little embarrassed. I remember a conversation I had with my daughter four years ago. And she said, Daddy, Obama's going to win. 
and I said, Courtney, <laughs> America will never elect a black man president. <laughs> and I've been covering politics for 25 yeah. years. She was right, I was wrong. That's the power of young people. She traveled around, they all did it, many of these young people, but they've lost that enthusiasm. And as the dean has said, they feel let down to a degree. They don't understand the reality of politics in the modern day era, and that Mr. Obama can't just wave a magic wand and get what he wants. But Richard, here's my final point. The president better be very careful, because if that enthusiasm is not there from young people, it might amount to bye-bye, Mr. Obama. Well, and can I just say, I know you're shaking your head, Andrew, but I talked to a young man yesterday, actually, at an event who was an Obama supporter in 2008 and is an African-American young man, and he said he was deeply troubled by the, the Democrats' activity in 2010 during the, mid during the midterm election and how he felt that the Democratic Party and Barack Obama had let the Democrats down and he wasn't sure he was going to go out for 2012 as a result of that. Well, that is that. Why do you shake your head? That's serious. That's the most invested 23 year old man I've ever oh, heard of, of in the political people process. People care. Uh, people care. Oh, they, they Andrew, people care. And you're, they one of the and things they're is, earnest. You're uh, cynical. That enthusiasm <laughs> certainly hasn't been captured by Mr. Romney, and it seems that at almost every opportunity he does his best to be unrelatable. Uh, we have another example here because. Ann Romney is an asset for this man. She keeps proving it, but he hasn't doing his pair. His you know, pair Ann shit. Romney may be the most popular member of the Romney team. She was in Connecticut yesterday trying to boost Romney's support among women, and she gave a speech that was both emotional and very personal. In my darkest hour, he stood by my side with my diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. He also stood by, by my side when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I had to have that. I had to have him believing in me and trusting that I could do the right things and pull through this. But before that clip could move the needle in Romney's direction, the least popular member of the Romney campaign got in front of the cameras, and just days after bashing the president for taking too many vacations, he started waxing poetic about his love for vacations in France. Oh, God. I have a lot of memories of France. I think the, uh, the, the best memories were uh, with my wife on vacations uh, from time to time in France. Uh, the last vacation we had there, uh, walking uh, around the city of, uh, of Paris and walking not just in the Champs Elysees, but also um, over to the Jardin of Luxembourg and, uh, and around the city is uh, one of the most magnificent cities in the world. And uh, I look forward to occasional vacations uh, again in such a beautiful place. I love the Gardens of Luxembourg. <laughs> it's the Champs Elysees. I, the closest I can get to France is French fries these days. So but it's do, you know what, though, Dominic, I'm not busting on, on taking the trip, but. Here he is trying to say, I feel your pain. And he's like, oh, yeah, whenever we go to vacations in Paris, it's wonderful. Okay, but wait, but in fairness now. It he was, sounded he, so but wait, bad. I, I don't see what's wrong. I've been to France several times. But you're not running for president trying to tell the guys Good in point. the red states, but, hey, but, I feel your but, pain, but, I'm going to get you a He job. was asked by a reporter. You don't his, have to answer his exp it. Yeah, you're right about Dominic, that. How many times you're right about that. Right. You're right about that. Oh, but my he, gosh. But he was asked about his experiences of his remembrances of traveling to Paris. Where is I? This guy made money. Mission. He's a successful guy. Successful people can take their wives on trips. So, what is wrong with so, that? Okay. People in red states like success, no problem, Richard. Talk about FYI. Every, every luxury car he has and all the multi-million dollar homes. Absolutely he no. should. If he earned it honestly, he should. I'm not saying it's and illegal. I'm okay. not saying I'm condemning him. But at the same end, he Do goes, Obama you know, doesn't get I you. I love to go to the Garden of Luxembourg. Come, come on. on. If How you many? sell <laughs> people in red states short when you assume they can't appreciate He's success. He's the great coupon guy from the commercial. That's not how, many, how, many, how many jobs did he cut to afford that trip to France? Yeah, don't let her hear. How many jobs did he cut to afford that trip to France? Oh, I don't know.